Hello everybody and welcome to the Epic Flight Academy in beautiful New Smyrna Beach, Florida. This is the Private Pilot Ground School and my name is Mike Thompson. Our topic today is atmospheric stability, latent heat, and dew point. Now, I'd like you to begin by remembering that success in this course is dependent upon three things. Number one, please be sure to study EPIC's online private pilot ground school course. And secondly, these videos are in parallel to that course content. And thirdly, of course, review all of this content with your flight instructor. So to begin, let's start with the diagram from EPIC's online private pilot course. And it looks like this. In this diagram, you see this orange parcel of air down near the surface at 30 degrees Celsius. And as it rises through the air, it cools. Or if you start at the top of the diagram, you see this large blue parcel of air at 10 degrees Celsius. And as it descends through the air, it warms. Now, folks, this is a result of what we call adiabatic heating and cooling. Adiabatic heating or cooling is when we have a volume of air, like this orange air parcel, and it's expanding as it rises, and or it is compressing as it descends, and it is not exchanging any heat with the surrounding atmosphere. So this orange parcel, you can see it cools as it rises because it expands. That's called adiabatic cooling. There's no heat exchange with the air around it. Or our light blue parcel warms as it descends due to compression. That's adiabatic heating and there is no exchange of heat with the air around it. Now, let's examine stability in a little more detail. And to do that, we're gonna look at diagrams from the FAA's advisory circular on aviation weather. Now, in that advisory circular, we're looking at chapter 12. And what you see here is figure 12-1. This is an example of absolute stability. And what I want you to notice in this example is our air parcel at the surface of the ocean here has a temperature of 20 and a dew point of 12.5. Now watch that air parcel rise and you'll see the temperature and dew point decrease until we get up to 11 degrees temperature and 11 degrees dew point at the base of this big white thing. This big white thing is representing a cloud. Now that parcel may continue to rise in that cloud and up near the top do you see where the temperature is 7 and the dew point is 7. That is adiabatic cooling. Now, to the left of that cloud, I want you to look at these temperatures, and these are the temperatures of the surrounding atmospheric air. Now, if we take the difference between the temperature of the surrounding air and the temperature of that parcel as it adiabatically cools, we're going to see that in the third column. And you see all the numbers in that third column are positive. That means that this air is stable. We call that absolute stability. Now take a look at our next diagram. 
same advisory circular, same chapter. This is figure 12-2, and we have that same parcel of air at sea level, 20 degrees temperature, 12 and a half degrees dew point, and notice it cools as it rises. As it rises, it expands, it cools adiabatically, and that means there is no heat exchange between that parcel and the surrounding air. And in the left-hand column, take a look at those surrounding air temperatures. Notice those surrounding air temperatures are getting cooler as well. And again, in our third column, let's take the difference between that environmental or surrounding air temperature and the temperature in our parcel. We do some simple math and what do we see? The difference is zero. So this is showing us what we call neutral stability. Now let's take a look at our third example. This is figure 12-3 and once again we're going to start with that same parcel of air at sea level. Notice the temperature is 20, the dew point's 12.5. That parcel of air will rise into the atmosphere and expand, and when it does that, it will cool adiabatically. That means there's no heat exchange between that parcel and the surrounding environmental air. And this time, let's look at our temperatures in the left-hand column. Notice those temperatures in the left-hand column are quite a bit cooler as we go up in the atmosphere. Now, once again, let's take a difference between that environmental air and the temperature of that air parcel. And in our third column, what do you notice? These numbers are negative. That means the surrounding air is cooler than that air parcel, even while that air parcel cools adiabatically. So if that air parcel is warmer than the surrounding air, even though it's cooling adiabatically, if it's warmer than the air around it, what's it going to want to do? If you said rise, you're correct. As we know, warm air wants to rise. And notice in 12-3, our, our white blob there that depicts a cloud, notice this one has kind of ruffled edges. This is trying to depict what we call a cumuliform cloud. This chart shows us absolute instability. So, the characteristics for unstable air look like this. Cumuliform clouds, which give us showery precip, some rough air, typically a little turbulence, however, pretty good visibility, except in blowing obstructions. And stable air gives us stratiform clouds and possibly fog, continuous type precipitation, but much less turbulence, actually pretty smooth air, however, fair to poor visibility in haze. Now let's discuss latent heat. What is latent heat? Latent heat is defined in our same advisory circular. This is the FAA's advisory circular on aviation weather. And this time we're in chapter 3. Latent heat is the quantity of heat energy that is either released or absorbed by a substance when it undergoes a phase transition. So I'm thinking back to that hot sauce I had last night and I think there was a little latent heat going on there. Um, latent heat, the energy either absorbed or released. Now why is that important? Because also in chapter 3 of Aviation Weather, I want you to be familiar with this latent heat transaction diagram. This is figure 3-4. Notice it is showing us water changing state. 
If we start on the left hand side of this diagram and we see water in a solid form or ice. Here I live in beautiful New Smyrna Beach, Florida and I'm going to take a bunch of ice cubes and I'm going to put them in a glass and pour some lemonade over the top of that. Ah, nice and refreshing. Now, notice in our diagram the pink arrows represent the absorption of latent heat from the environment. So as you move from your left to the right, you see from a solid to a liquid is melting. And it's a pink arrow, which means that there's heat being absorbed from the environment. And if we continue on, we see that liquid, if it absorbs heat from the environment, will evaporate into a vapor. Now, is it possible for that ice to go directly from a solid to a vapor? And the answer is, drum roll please. Yes. And that is called, as you can see on your diagram, sublimation. Now, the reverse occurs if you move in this diagram from the right to the left. If we start with water vapor and it releases some of its latent heat into the atmosphere, it becomes a liquid. And if that liquid then continues to release its latent heat, it becomes a solid. And is it possible to go directly from a vapor to a solid? The answer is yes. And you can see on the diagram that is called deposition. So these concepts are important to help us understand meteorology and how the weather works the way it works. That brings us to humidity. What is humidity? Humidity, uh, as water evaporates, it changes from liquid to a gas. And we just saw that in the previous uh, figure. And the amount of water vapor in the air, in that vaporous form or that gaseous form, is humidity. As more water evaporates and turns to water vapor, humidity goes up. So remember, warm air can hold more water vapor than cold air. Now, as we study this a little bit further, it's important to understand dew point. What is that? That is a temperature. The dew point is the temperature at which the air can hold no more moisture. When the temperature of the air is reduced to its dew point, the air is saturated. The moisture in the air comes out and uh, turns into a vapor like fog or dew or frost. So relative humidity then is the amount of water vapor in the air expressed in a percentage. That percentage is compared to the total amount of water vapor that air could possibly hold. Now to help us understand that a little bit better, once again we're going to go back to the FAA's advisory circular on aviation weather and we are still in chapter 3 and I'd like you to take a look at this diagram. This is figure 3-2 and it shows us the temperature effect on relative humidity. Notice in this diagram the dark green circles are representing an actual gram of water vapor in a particular volume. That volume is, is uh, these three cubes. These, are, these uh, cubes represent a parcel of air. The light green dot represents the potential gram of water vapor that air could hold. Now, if we understand that, let's look at the, temp the effect of temperature. So we see on your left at 30 degrees Celsius, 
There is room in this parcel of air for that air to hold more water vapor because it's warmer. As you move from the left to the right, you see at 20 degrees Celsius, there is less room for that parcel to hold water vapor. There's some room, but not quite as much because this air is cooling off. And if you go all the way to the right, you see at 10 degrees Celsius, aha, there is no more room for any extra water vapor. That air is saturated at that cooler temperature. So that brings us to our final diagram. And our final diagram is once again in the advisory circular aviation weather and it's also in chapter 3 this is figure 3-3 and we're talking about the temperature dew point spread and the effect that has on relative humidity now as you look at this diagram notice that we're at a constant temperature all the way across and you can see our dashed green line here is 11 degrees. Now on the left we can see that the uh, air temperature of this parcel is 22 degrees. So the dark green wedge in the pie represents the actual water vapor and the light green wedge in the pie represents the maximum possible water vapor. So you see at 22 degrees that light green wedge is fairly large. This warm air could take more moisture. And in fact this warm air could hold twice the moisture it's holding right now. Its relative humidity is 50 percent. It's holding about half of the amount of water vapor that it could hold. Relative humidity of 50%. Now move to the right. Look in the center diagram. Now the air temperature has gone down to 15 degrees. While the dew point is still 11, there is room for a little bit of water vapor here. If you look at that light green wedge, it's still there but it's gotten smaller. There's not a lot of room for more water vapor. We're almost saturated, but not quite. The relative humidity here is 75%. That air is holding 75% of the moisture it's capable of holding. And then finally, all the way to the right, you just see the temperature has come all the way down to 11. Now, the temperature and dew point are equal. When the temperature and dew point are equal, that means this air parcel cannot hold any more moisture. Notice there is no light green wedge. This air is 100% saturated or expressed in relative humidity, relative humidity of 100%. Well, folks, that is a description of the content. Let's wrap this up with a question on atmospheric stability, latent heat, and dew point. And here's our question. What's the difference between latent heat and adiabatic heating? Hmm. Think about that for a second. Now, if you answered that latent heat is absorbed or giving up during a change of state. And adiabatic heating means heating from a volume of air being compressed where no heat is exchanged, then you're correct. Well, folks, that's it for atmospheric stability, latent heat and dew point. See you next time.